Let's be honest, there are two kinds of pilots in the FPV community. You are either A, a pilot who saves up money and buys premium gear. Maybe you don't even save up money, you just happen to have the budget. Maybe you don't have the budget and you just work really hard to save up the money to buy premium high quality name brand gear that has the best ratings on paper or whatever it may be and that's what makes you happy about the hobby. Perfect. Then there's number two, who buys budget things because... They feel like they get more for their money whenever they buy budget things, or they just have a budget that only allows for budget, else they would never be able to fly. And sometimes they have to roll the dice. Sometimes they buy a budget item, and it is really, really, really good. No idea how it got that good for the price. And sometimes they buy a total piece of crap. Well, today I'm going to show you a new stack from Speedy Bee that is not a total piece of crap. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and yes, Speedy Bee has done it again with their budget line of stacks. They have come out with the F405 V4, and no, I am not the first person to show it to you because it's been all over the interwebs already. I've actually had this for a little while. I have just been testing the ever-living crap out of it to determine if it's worth talking about to you. And I've finally gotten around to thinking, yeah, it's worth talking about. Because I have used the F405 V3 in a ton of builds. I've used their 405 V3, I've used their F7 V3, and now I've used their 405 V4. I use the F405 Mini. I've used all of their stuff, and I know a lot of people who have used it. The F405 V3, great flight controller, terrible at black box logging. The ESC, I know some people who have popped it, but... What I will say is that on the V4, Speedy B went straight back to the drawing board with feedback from the community, with feedback from creators and testers, and I think they've done a lot of things to change this stack into something that is even more for your money than it was previously. And speaking of your money, it is $69.99. This is a $70 stack, that is half the cost of the more premium brands, and if you're like pilot number two and you buy the budget stuff because that's what you can get and what you're happy purchasing, this might be right up your alley. Now, let me just show you what this is, go over the base specs, and then we're gonna talk about what they changed on it and why I think this is a better stack than it was six months ago when it was just the F405 V3. The F405 V4 stack maintains the same four factor as the F405 V3. You still get a full 30 by 30 flight controller, a full 30 by 30 ESC. The ESC is rated at 55 amps. It is a BL Heli S 8 bit ESC. Nothing too special there, but we'll get into some more specifics here in a minute. Uh, some things I like and dislike about the changes they have made to this ESC. Now, the flight controller is the real star of the show here because they packed a ton of features in there. The F405 V4 retains all of the feature set of the 405 V3. It still has an onboard barometer. It has the LiPo indicator lights. It's a USB-C connection. It has the SpeedyB wireless connectivity. It has all the UARTs and everything you'd expect from an F405. It also has a gyroscope because flight controllers have gyroscopes. But it's a different gyroscope than we had on the V3. I'm a big fan of the BMI 270 gyro. I don't know why. You can slander me in the comments all you want to. I like the BMI 270. I was a fan of the MPU 6000 gyro. Nothing wrong for me with the MPU 6000. I just really like the BMI 270. This has an ICM gyro in it. Now wait, before you get your pitchforks out and we roast marshmallows over the flaming corpse of this stack, I promise it's not as bad as it sounds. It has the ICM 42688P gyro in it, which has in the past had some problems with noise. I'm not gonna lie, I was never a fan of this gyro. But what they have done right about the implementation of this gyro, in fact, if you go read Oscar Liang's whole breakdown on gyroscopes and things about flight controllers, which is a great article, by the way, that if you have not read, will give you some terrific insight into flight controllers. You'll notice the specific ICM model that he's talking about, or that we're talking about here, says it's best off if it has a dedicated power supply. Well, a lot of boards never implemented that. They just threw this flipping gyro on there and said, go to town, man. Be as noisy as you want to be, and by God, the ICM gyro would. But Speedy B didn't just do that here. We have a full LDO power setup that is separate from the other power regulation on the board. And we have a 100 microfarad tantalum capacitor just for this gyro. So you know the thing you do to fix noisy gyros on cheap flight controllers? You add a 100 microfarad or so tantalum capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail? That's already done here. That's the whole point. And actually, this is the first ICM gyro that I've flown that I didn't want to just throw out the window. 
It is actually really good. I am going to hold my breath for the ICM gyro hate that I have had for forever, and I'm going to put this in the same class as the MPU 6000, maybe a little bit better. Now, you're probably asking where all the reference charts are for this. They don't exist yet because I haven't made them, but I am working on it. I'm going to keep flying this stack for a few more months, and then I'm going to do probably a whole lot more noise analysis. I feel like I haven't put enough hours on it to really take a look at black box logs and know exactly what's going on with it. But what I can tell you is that it doesn't feel like other ICM implementations that I've had before. And that is a really good thing because I have always hated them. So let's just skip on over to the next big thing they did. And that's gonna be on the ESC. And that is this new black diamond cut top cover because looking cool is just as good as working well. No, I'm actually not talking about the cover at all. Although the cover does look really cool on this, I like the aluminum heatsink on this better than the V3 for sure. I think it looks better. It's what's under the heatsink that counts. Because when it comes to a premium board versus a more budget board, what you usually see is a difference in the thickness of the copper clad on the board. Because thicker copper clad can handle more amp load longer without getting hot. And then when it does get hot, it can dissipate heat faster from different areas of the board because it's thicker amounts of copper. That and newer MOSFETs or bigger, better MOSFETs typically are what set a more expensive ESC apart from a cheaper one. In this V4 revision, SpeedyB went from two ounce to three ounce copper clad. And although that's only one number, you have to look at it this way. It was two ounces, now it's three. That is a 50% increase in what it was. So it is now 150% the thickness that it was in the V3. And it's still rated at 55 amps. So it's even thicker copper. They have used newer and they say more upgraded MOSFETs for this, but it's 50% thicker copper at the same rating. They also were saying they can get 280 amps for a sustained 10 second burst in this, which is not what was happening on the V3. And why I think people were sometimes popping them, because they would hit that amp limit on 6S high KV, which is kind of a thing we do now, and it would not be able to sustain it. But with the thicker copper clad here and the newer MOSFETs, I have not been able to pop one of these and I have been pretty forceful in my time with this. Now, I never broke any V3s, but I know exactly how to break them, and I have put this in the situations that should break it, and I have not broke the one that I have in my quad. So, it's going well. Now, your mileage is gonna vary, of course, but I think it's a really great upgrade for a budget ESC. Definitely money well spent in the thicker copper department. Now for the biggest upgrade to this, I've saved it for last because the suspense had to be there. It's the SD card. They've actually fixed it. They fixed the SD card. And if you never knew what the SD card problem was with the V3, essentially the SD card and the OSD chip shared a pin on the processor, which sounds great because in Betaflight 4.2 that worked just fine. But Betaflight 4.3 and 4.4 presented some problems with using this and there was just no way to either have your analog OSD and your black box record at the same time or one work versus the other consistently. You either had choppy OSD and some black box, full OSD and no black box, or all black box and no OSD. It just depended on who was talking on the pin at the time. Well, in the V4, they have fixed that by putting all of the devices on their own separate SPI. It also means that we have finally enabled support for DSHOT on iNav. So if you were running this board in the V3 configuration, if you decided to buy one because it has a barometer and all the things you need for iNav, you might have found that you had to run multi-shot instead of D-shot. That is a problem. If you're not an iNav pilot, just skip through this part. But for the iNav people, it was very important because budget stacks are hard to come by for iNav. You've got to have different things on them, and that's beta flight pilots can just skip those things while INAV people must have them, and budget is hard to put all the things in. But with this new pin configuration, you can have your D-shot back in INAV. So if you're an INAV pilot looking for budget, this is your calling right here. Go get this one and have yourself a D-shot party. If you're a beta flight pilot though, and you were looking for black box logs out of your V3, this fixes it. And I am sorry to say that it took a hardware fix to do this, what beta, what SpeedyB implemented on the V3 should have worked just fine, but newer editions of Betaflight are newer editions of Betaflight, and things no longer functioned without a hardware fix, so they were kind of rock and hard place, 
and they definitely fixed it on the V4. I have validated that, the black box does work. It's still an SD card though, so you have to remember it has to be FAT or FAT32 formatted. It can be no bigger than four gigabytes on the partition, no matter what size the card is. It has to be formatted down to four gigabytes to work in here, and it will only ever be four gigabytes. SpeedyB, if you're listening on the V5, give us the chip from the SpeedyBF 404F7 V3, the big, huge, huge, flash chip. Give us that one and put it on here because I love that flash chip and it's way better than cramming an SD card on my flight controller. But at least they fixed this one. So if you were fiending for those black box logs on the V3, this fixes it. Along with maintaining all the feature set from the V3 that was good, the LiPo checker, the wireless connectivity, the ability to change your motor directions wirelessly, the flashing components, all of the things that were great about the V3 are maintained here and added to. And I'm gonna give them a pass on switching to the ICM gyro versus the BMI. I just personally prefer the BMI. I would pick that over the MPU 6000. Sue me in the comments. However you want to roast me hard down there, but that is my personal preference. And the ICM in this is actually really good. I am going to do a further video where I look into the logging to see how noisy it really is, but my cursory analysis over the 50 or so packs that I have put on the one that I have in my build is that it flies just fine. I can't really tell much difference between it and the BMI or it and the MPU 6000 without really digging into the logging. And once I get good, sufficient, lots of logs, we will take a bigger look at it. But don't be scared by the fact that this says ICM on it. It is implemented appropriately. And I look forward to other reviewers taking deep dives into the gyro, especially someone like UAV Tech taking a look at the black box traces and really telling us what they think with their incredibly professional opinion and assessing the gyro noise. Uh, I think that's going to be very important. But you do have to remember, this is a $70 stack that is half the price of the premium, boys. And if you are pilot number two, this might be for you. That totally rhymes. So leave me a comment down below if you're pilot number two and you think something like a speedy B stack is right up your alley. Leave me a comment below if you're more of a Mamba boy and you want to do Mamba and you just, you know, you want to stick with your hobby wings and your Mamba and you never want to touch a speedy B. Because uh, I want to talk about why. Because maybe I can influence Speedy B into fixing some of the problems you have with them. So let me know in the comments below. And if you're all about the Speedy Bs, let me know too. Uh, if not, if you're a pilot number one, tell me what your favorite manufacturer is for flight controllers and ESCs. As long as it's not something that runs KISS, I will reply to your comment. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I actually will be running a KISS flight controller before too long, thanks to one of the amazing patrons, subscribers, and viewers of this channel, and a moderator on my Discord. So, yeah, if it runs KISS, leave it below. I want to know what your favorite things are. Just leave them down there. When it comes to flight controllers, ESCs, tell me about them. Anyway, until next time, stay greasy. Maybe check one of these out. If you've got the pocket change, you pick one up and you're in the market. And until next time, I'll catch you later. And while I let these patrons scroll across my face, which I'm contractually obligated to do by their patron agreements, because they make this channel possible, I'm just here to be the mouthpiece of stupid things that are said on this channel. They keep the lights on. I'm going to talk about this video. Yeah, it was really fun testing the F405V4. Uh, I did have to record everything I said five times, though. In fact, I've recorded this patron spot three times because I can't seem to keep my ideas together tonight. Something is wrong in my head, a wire is disconnected, and these people have to help me pay to fix it um, because I'm just not able to hold it together. Uh, yeah, I'll probably record this again before it's done, so let me know in the comments below if you're a creator and you have the same problem. And if you're not a creator, that's perfectly fine. If you want to be a patron, uh, go to the same link these people went to in the description, and your name can be on this list too while I ramble about how hard it was to keep my thoughts together from rambling. I'm doing it again.